Episode 126, Wayne in with Travis Hartman. I am B-Money, the producer. That over there is the talent. We can travel. we got to respond to this. Teofimo Lopez beating Josh Taylor this past weekend, winning the WBO Junior Welterweight title, the 140 title there in 12 rounds. We can Trav, we did a prediction video leading up to this thing, but let me give get your take here on this fight. Now, post-fight, it's been a few days, you as the boxer and also you as a trainer, as a coach, what are your thoughts here on Teofimo Lopez now uh, holding one of those belts at 140 after beating Josh Taylor? I mean, even though he only won one belt, he really won all four because Josh Taylor had all four. Josh Taylor didn't lose any of those belts. He was inactive for about 15 months, so he, he still had all the belts. So what I'm saying about that is Teofimo beat the guy at 140. The only guy at 140, TFM will beat him. Ric Flair says, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Whoa! There you go. <laughs> so it was a, hey, we all have known that TFOMO is a great talent, okay? He proved that to us when he beat Lomachenko mm-hmm. at like his 14th pro fight. I think he was like maybe 14 or 15 or no. And just and then smashed him. I mean, beat him pretty handily, did well, wasn't even a close fight. He won that fight pretty easily. And then he lost to Cambosis. Then he's had a couple ho-hum fights, arguably lost to Chris Sandor Martin, his last fight. Mm-hmm. And then he goes up in weight, and I'm like, no way he's gonna win this fight. Me and you both got it wrong. And we've got it wrong fair and square. And technically I got it right. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, no, because the scorecards no, were correct. No, no. So we're on that technicality. We're going to discuss that later on when we discuss this bottle of swill BS, here. BS. Anyways, so keep going. So we got Teofimo Lopez. He, he to me, we can travel. What I see when he fights is he fights to the level of the competition. But Maybe then so. in these guys that he should beat or, you know, shouldn't even be much of a challenge or, 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 or not, he doesn't come to play. He doesn't come to party. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know. And maybe, you know what? Maybe there's some truth to a lot of the stuff, like going into the Cambosis fight, he claimed he had a hole in his lung or something crazy. They showed they showed x-rays of it. It looked like it looked real. Um, a bunch of other stuff. I know that he's currently battling with his ex-wife with their child. They've kept the child from the Kai. And if you know anything, look at the dad in that case. And that dad is toxic, and I've said it from the beginning. Yep. I've said it for a while now. That dad needs to be out of that camp. Be his father, not his trainer. And I think that's what needs to happen. However winning will mask all problems of course and they won over the weekend convincingly even though the scorecards were really close there was no chance that no. josh taylor could have won that fight okay i watched it i we we picked josh taylor and yeah. I, I i was rooting for him but from the third round on tia fomo really took over to be fair though tia fomo's face was marked up so josh taylor was hitting him so it wasn't like it was one-sided beating because mm-hmm. josh taylor was hitting tia fomo um so it was a great fight but tia fomo Teofimo, his accuracy, his speed, his his athleticism, I mean, was on point. His reactions were on point. But he needed, I mean, he he was he needed it. it he's a smaller guy in that ring. Yep. His reach, you, it was he a was noticeable, visibly, yeah. noticeable difference between the two. But Josh Taylor also, on the other hand, he didn't look like Josh Taylor. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't it just didn't look like he was motivated to be there. It didn't. It just I didn't sense that. I didn't sense the urgency from him when they stepped into the ring, um, and he just didn't look. He just looked flat. The best word I could put is he looked flat to me yeah. for nearly twelve rounds. Maybe not all the rounds, but most of those rounds, Josh Taylor looked flat. Yeah, I mean, I think that. I think it was a lot of what TFOMO was presenting and doing, but mm. also it did come into play a little bit. Um, Josh Taylor had been off for 15 months. Mm-hmm. You cannot be an undefeated fighter and mm. be off for 15 months. You just can't and then expect to perform at your absolute best when you come back your first fight. And your first fight you're taking on TFOMO Lopez. Like, you just can't. But that's not taking anything away from TFOMO because he performed. Okay, when you're that fast, that athletic, encountering the guy like he was, it will make you look flat. It will make you look hesitant, and all of that is what Josh Taylor looked like. I'm telling you, from round three or four on, it wasn't even, it wasn't a fight. I knew that T. Fumo was taking over after about the fourth round. I was like, he's taking uh, over. I see what you did there, the takeover. <laughs> you know, because it was kind of silly because some of his strikes, and I call them strikes because I'm like, I don't see this outside of a cage. 
He did a lot of these jumping Superman. Yeah. Super athletic. I'm dude. like, what the heck? This is a boxing match. How is Josh Taylor just eating those? Anyways. Athletic, uh, man, though. He's fast and athletic. Yeah. Well, let's get back to the drama, though. We, we've talked before about the father, the family drama. What is it nowadays with some of these younger fighters who are the guys, the top guys, yep. and all this baggage they're already carrying? They're in their, their what, mid to low 20s? Yeah, he's like 25, 24. And they already have all this drama drama on baggage what is up with that weekend travel why are we seeing that between a hint like between tiofimo between ryan garcia uh tank davis in jail right now we got um devin haney's father seems to run everything and, and making about family battles i just don't understand a weekend travel what's two the deal? things two things one social media era mm. we know everything now mm. it's not that this stuff wasn't happening in back in the day because i guarantee you it was you're seeing a lot of documentaries now even with the sugary leonards and the roberto durans mm. you go back to the 80s these guys had a lot of drama too you just didn't hear about it because of social media two i do think the culture has changed a little bit because of social media so i do see these kids getting into more trouble now and having more drama outside the ring and that's the thing if you want to be great you have to have it together inside the ring and together outside the ring. Well, you have to have it together up here. Which just, is a mental problem. It just seems to me that a lot of these guys, for lack of better words, and I'm not trying to you know, like diminish mental health issues and whatever else, so don't take it that way, folks, if you're listening to me or watching me on YouTube or Rumble. Um, I just feel like some of these guys have gotten soft, and maybe it is because of the social media stuff, because everything's at their fingertips. They need people praising them constantly, giving them thumbs up and likes. Yeah. By the way, like below, subscribe below to our videos because we need it too. Because we're 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 dinosaurs in this kind of stuff, <laughs> but we also have we're we soft, are we're we are a little bit. So give us a like or a thumb up and subscribe below to our content. We do appreciate that comment below. But these guys here, they're on Instagram. I don't know. Some are on Snaps. Some of you guys have OnlyFans accounts. I don't know about that. Yeah. But they're constantly looking for that sh being showered with praise. Where you go way back in time, not way back, but 10, 15 years, it was different. Yep. You weren't getting that kind of love all over the place. And I was in different places. You were getting it on TV. You were getting it when you fought, but you weren't getting it right at your fingertips. You, you weren't know, getting it every day on social media. To me, you know where else the older fighters were getting it? When they looked at their stinking bank accounts. Yeah. These guys, these young bucks, they need to realize it. This stuff doesn't happen. It doesn't continuously happen. It's, it's for a fleeting moment in time. And they need to stop chasing all the accolades and people to stroke in their ego and realize, holy crap. I'm boxing. I'm getting paid. That's the beauty and the beast of, of, of competing in a singular sport mm. is that you, you are who you are because of your ego because a lot of people have built you up. Okay, That has is, that is catapulted a lot of these guys to where they're at. Mm. But the difference is I think Tia Fomo's dad, Tia Fomo, Tia Fimo's Fimo. dad, yeah. has gotten him to where he's at, made him believe that he can do anything in the world. But what they do lack is once he gets there, that dad doesn't know how to stay there. That dad knew how to get him there, but he doesn't know how to handle that fame once it's there. Because now that dad is, he's out of this world, man. He's, Here, he's affecting his child in a very negative way. Here's what pisses the me off. He's winning in spite of his Here's dad, what pisses me off about sports parents or sports fathers mainly. In general. In general. But, it's, I mean, you see a lot in the boxing game just because that's what we talk about week in, week out. When the fathers are iced out more than the sons who are working – who are the ones earning the money? That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And the one taking the they punches. got all the drip, but the but the fighters themselves aren't aren't aren't, aren't like that, right? So that just tells you because these these fathers they're only a little older than us, if if not the same age, roughly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because so, that's crazy. They were oh my gosh. So they came up of a certain age too, where you're starting to want that ego stroke, and they couldn't get it done themselves. So yep. now they're living vicariously through their yep. kid. That sucks. Yep. So the mental issues to your female. Hell, let's bring it up. Did he retire? Yeah, he did. He said he did. I so what he what B Money is referencing is on social media the next day, Sunday, TFMO came out and said, Hey, wait a wait, what a way to go out on top. I'm retiring. It's been an amazing ride. Blah blah blah. So what I think is this is First of all, Tyson Fury said a crazy president when he retired 92 times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but to be fair, nobody talks about it. But Mayweather did the same stuff. He did. Back in the day, he retired three or four times, came out of retirement after like 13-month layoff and fought Juan Manuel Marquez and beat him. I used to think, so, I used to think you weren't cool unless you peed your pants. Now, you, <laughs> now you're not cool unless you retire you're when you're – You're bringing your age out right now because that was a good movie. Man, look at that so, yeah, I mean, listen – 
he retired, but I think what it is a negotiated employee for money because he claimed that he only made a million dollars, which I actually believe, yeah, he probably only made probably. a million. Probably. I shouldn't say only. He made a million dollars. Do you know how many fighters would kill for I would have killed for that. I fought for it 19 gets, years and never made a million dollars up, in one fight. It gets cut up a lot of ways, though. So for I, sure. I get for the point. sure. I get the point. You're putting your body out there. You're headlining. You're main eventing. ESPN is making a lot of ad revenue off of this thing. Okay. It was ESPN regular, though. I know. But there's still the ad revenue that flows through that is still a machine. It's huge. Uh, so not this, quite the same as pay-per-view. I get that. But I, what was he? It was bombastic what he was asking about. Nine right. figures? Is that yeah, what I heard yeah, right? Yeah. Nine figures? Yeah. So, like, listen, guys like that, I, I get it because I was a boxer. I get it. We want to get paid as much as we can. But what I don't get is complaining about what you get paid after the fact. You agreed to that contract. Yeah. You, what people don't realize is there's a negotiation. The promoter comes to you and says, hey, this is what we're offering. Do you want this? What are you going to do? So he happily agreed to that months ago. Yeah. So I don't like the fact when this gets brought out into the media because I'm like, hey, listen, you should have probably been doing this before the fight. But I, I know what he's doing. He's negotiating because he has a good, he's got a good leg to negotiate on now because he just beat the guy who is the guy at 140, sure. right? So his next fight's... He's gonna make more, but you're gonna have to fight. But you're gonna have to fight. They sold out the garden, the the, the theater, the Hulu, Hulu theater, theater at yep. the garden, right? Awesome, regular pay per view. There's not a ton of money to be made there. There is money to be made. I get it, yes, but there's not a ton of money to be made there because right. you're Tiafoe and you fought also a guy from England, you gotta be from Vegas. Scotland. You gotta be. You gotta fight big. somebody like Gervonta. You yeah. gotta fight somebody like Ryan Garcia. So, pay-per-view so here, money here's what doesn't make sense so i get it this is going to be a negotiation ploy the retiring the nine Clearly, figures that's what whatever else but given his history of just wishy-washiness on the mental side some injuries here and there the father all the family drama is somebody going to want to sign him to a massive fight deal to so many fights no you're going to want to get maybe get him on the record for three to five right yep and that doesn't add up to a hundred million plus on nine figures dude not <laughs> yeah. Tiafimo lopez not when that division and that that weight range is just there's a ton of guys we talk about no way no way he he brought up something too that was very touchy he brought up race did you hear his conversations oh about black fighters are getting better opportunities and making more money than him things like that he actually did. And and listen to this. You didn't see this, but oh. the dad was in the background, and the dad tried to interrupt in the conversation. Of course and said, he did. And he was actually trying to protect Tio for this one. He goes, Tio, don't be talking about that. He says, no, 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 no. I'm going to talk about it. He's like, I don't take it back. I mean this. And the interviewer was like, keep talking. Keep talking. Um, wow. But the dad tried to interrupt him and trying to save him. And he was like, no, no, he's not backing down from that. He's like, this is the truth, and I know it. And everybody else that's listening knows it. And listen, I'm, I'm not weighing in one – either way on that but i'm telling you that he is speaking from experience he's been there sure and he's speaking sure. from he's looking out there and seeing what javante davis is making mm -hmm. and then he's looking and seeing what he's making and he's actually here's the difference and most people don't realize this i still fight with people on, online about this javante davis is not a world champion no no he doesn't own a world title he has a cracker jack tia fomo oh, yeah. had all of the titles at 135 move yeah. up to 140 should have all the titles he's got one title so i can see what tia fomo is saying tia from his tia Fimo, what he is saying from his perspective yeah. i can see that when he talks yeah, yeah. about black and white and black and hispanic even so i can kind of see what he's saying because he's not wrong and he's a world champion but let me he does deserve to get paid but let me push back on that point Look at the guys that he surrounds himself with, or like a Tank Davis surrounds himself with. Not saying I don't I don't agree with any of his out of the ring antics because obviously he's serving some time right now uh, because of that. Uh, he but, violated his house arrest. But prior, when he was hooked up with Floyd Mayweather, he's had the right people around. They know how to market properly. Tufimos, he's funneling through his father. That's he's not also, exactly the most genius move. He's with Bob Arum and. Well, and you know how that's going to work. Yeah. Bob Arum, first of all, his internal light is about to snuff out, let alone the way he snuffs out fighters' lights. I've said this from three years ago when we started doing this show. Every great fighter, Bob Arum had at one time, but, it, but they weren't great then. In order for them to be great and make that great money, they all left him. I know. Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. Left Floyd May or left um, Bob Arum right. to make all the money, start Golden Boy Promotions. Floyd Mayweather 
Nobody realizes that he bought his contract out from Bob Barham to leave top rank because Bob right. Barham said, you'll never make money. Guess who else just left Bob Barham too? Terrence Crawford. Yep. Guess what fight he just made? The fight we've all been asking for with Earl Spence in July. Guess who also now is going to need to leave Bob Barham to make yeah. big money? Tiafimo Lopez. Do you have any idea about his contract, or, or does he have any fights left on that thing? With I'm not rank? sure what the contract is. I don't think he ever signed a long-term contract with but Bob Barham, but I know he's, got, he's under contract. He definitely rolled that. ESPN under the bus on, on some of the comments he made post-fight about how much money he's made for them, and he's barely walked away mm -hmm. with any of it. So, you know, he's he's not he's not worried about burning those bridges. Also not ESPN's fault, because ESPN has an exclusive deal with Bob Barham. That's more of Bob Barham's fault. ESPN's like, hey, we're a third party. I think, we give Bob Barham money, he makes I fights. I think these guys realize how old Bob Barham is now. And now he's just kind of willing to fumble all the bags, you know. He's not fumbling bags; he's taking bags. Yeah, but at this <laughs> point, he's losing guys left and right. Yeah. I mean, who who are who are his main guys now? Who are still in his crop? Well, he actually he still has a bunch. Of people are still with him. Crawford was with him I just know last year. People are with him, but who's I'm there? Trying to think. I mean, Tifimo, yes. Um, Bob Barham has got a bunch of people. I'm I'm trying to think. But elites. I know this is bad that I'm, I'm fumbling this right now. But it's shifting. He's got a bunch of people. It's still. shifting, and you're seeing the Eddie Hearns of the world oh gosh, clean that up. Have? No, it doesn't matter. Keep Either it going. One. He's got so, some people. So though. moving on. Moving moving on. Tiofimo right now. He's in negotiations. He's going to say some wild stuff. No, folks. He's not retired. He's I don't not going to retire. That, that his it, let alone his father loves money too much in order for it to let his son retire. So that's not going to happen. This is a negotiating ploy. You've heard it here. Uh, you know, a thousandth. We're not the first ones to break this. There's no way yeah. he's retiring. Just like when Tyson Fury's retired 90-something times, each time he was not you. retiring, I right? I told you, yeah. So, oh, Bob, Bob Brim has Tyson Fury. Oh, that's true. That's true. But that's only as good until it's not, right? Yeah. He's got all the greats, though. And he he's done nothing but greats. protect him from fighting anybody recently. So that's a different story. We can trap. Final remarks. You know, let's let's go ahead and with regard to uh, Teofimo Lopez, Josh Taylor. Let's go Josh Taylor first. Where does Josh Taylor go from here? Well, I got to give Josh Taylor a lot of credit because in the post fight, I love it when fighters do this. He could have made every excuse in the book. Sure. I was off for 15 months. He said it multiple times and he even said it on social media. He said, zero excuses. This guy beat me tonight. Yeah. Fair and square. I love that. I don't like a good loser. No. But I like a classy person that knows, hey, I did lose tonight, but I want another shot at it. He kept asking Tiafimo a couple different times, hey, can we do this again? Let's run it back again. And to be fair, I'd watch it again. Sure. I would. I thought it was a, I thought it was a decent fight. I would like to see um, Josh Taylor do a little more. He did look super hesitant, super stale, super flat later in the fight. He came, in, to he came in lighter, too. He came in lighter than Tiafimo. He he'd been off for 15 months, so maybe there's just maybe he was yeah. insecure about a lot of stuff. Maybe his training, maybe overtrained even. You could, that's possible to mm. overtrain. Maybe he did a lot of stuff differently that, that he wouldn't have normally done. But it was very ballsy for him to come right out of 15-month layoff and fight Tiafimo. Yeah. It was very ballsy. I still thought he would win, so did Vegas. We thought he did have the goods, but we hadn't seen him for 15 months. So I would like to see him go back at it. I would like to see him run it back with Tiafimo, but I don't know if they'll make a lot of money. We'll see. Let's pause it right there because we did a prediction video. You could see it uh, in our little you know history or our list there. I don't know whether or not you want to watch that right now because it's over. But we both... So we can Trav said Josh Taylor by decision, okay? It did go the distance. We were right in saying, you know, put your money on it wasn't gonna be the over, 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 over 10 and a half. We did say that. Okay, so it wasn't going to be a big payout, but it was a payout at least. Uh, and and in, in regard to Vegas, Josh Taylor was a, it was a favorite, but it wasn't like it was a massive slight, favorite. Yeah. It was slight. Uh, I said Josh Taylor, but I have a feeling that Tiafimo is going to snake this victory somehow. It's going to be something questionable. It wasn't, but technically he did win. Technically. So what that so means. So technically... Tifamo, yes. He not technically. He did win. So he won. So technically, you my... You said it was going to be a funny decision, though. And it was... I wasn't. Was, I was laughing because that meant... <laughs> you motherfucker. Week and Trav gets to drink this bottle of Swill. You can't see it at home, but there's a label I'm here I'm not drinking now. the whole thing. Not the whole thing. Oh, you said I'm drinking the bottle. So I got freaking scared. If you watched our prediction... Was it the Ooh. prediction video or no? I don't remember. I think not, it was, yeah, I think it was a prediction video. We're not sure what's in this. We, we really all i know we j it might be a mixture as well the other day it smelled it's it still smells bad rotten peanuts it tasted like rotten peanuts this is a this bottle of swill we can trav because he picked josh taylor and technically i had teofimo uh, lopez winning josh taylor lost so we can trav gets to take a nice swig of this bottle of swill 
Nothing floating around it. It has a nice golden amber color. Before I take this bot this this disgusting Careful, it's a little swig right of there. will. That was from us too. Yeah. Um I just looked up Bob Arum is net worth is three hundred million dollars. Yeah, but he has a, like three years left of life. What are you gonna do with all that? That's insane. He's like 92, 91, 93, something like that. But that's insane. It's like George Soros is worth what? His companies are worth $30 billion or something crazy like that. And he just passed on. Anyway, that's a different topic. Pass it on to his son. Yeah. <laughs> his, it's his one, son who was like 32. I'm only doing more. I'm not. So that's a good rule. Loser of prediction videos has to take swill. a healthy swig of yeah. swill. Or just any bet in general. <coughs> uh, so there you go. Yeah, we can just punish people through that. We can, Trav. Uh, <laughs> drink a little bit of that, that swill. Oh, fudge that, that me. I need water. Sterile, Why do you need I don't water? Like Why do you let me get some water? I don't know. So anyways, what's next then we can, Trav, for Tiafimo Lopez? Would it be nice for them to run it back? Sure. Uh, would we watch it? Sure. But what should be next for Tiafimo Lopez here? Oh, my gosh. So Tif- he is, it's bright. It's bright because what can happen also, I don't know if I'll ever go back down, but at 135 is hot. Any of those 135s can now come up and, and challenge him. You know, you got Devin Haney. You got Lomachenko still at 135. You have Shakir Stevenson who can move up. You have Gervonta Davis. You have Ryan Garcia. You have Roly Ramiro. You have you have the guy who should have beat Roly Ramiro there too. So there's a lot of people in that division that the if he's smart, Tifimo Lopez, and – to be fair, Bob Arum is really smart, but he's really smart for himself. But if Tifimo is smart, he's got a couple really big blockbuster fights that he could take, and he doesn't have to take them right away. Cash in, have a fight next that is – actually, you know what, for him, just from what you've been saying, from him, you're not wrong. He fights to level his competition. I think he needs a Roley next. So, you know, oh, my God, I would love to see him fight Roley. And, and not I would actually love that. And not because I, I like Roley because I don't. I think he's I don't think he's such an unorthodox, weird fighter. Garbage. But I think Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. You know, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think Tiofimo will box down to that level, and it will be entertaining of some sort. And at the very least, Tiofimo walks out with another belt. I want to see the trash talking with Rolly Romero and Tiofimo's dad. Yeah, because that will be the, the weird, best. The, that way, the best. The weird voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think Tiofimo's future is bright. I think he, I think he can pick and choose who he wants to fight, but I think he should pick the big fights. I would love to see him, but Ryan Garcia won't do it because Tiofimo. I think Tifimo knocks out Ryan Garcia, but if he wants a big fight, a big money fight, I don't think he knock him out. But yeah, fight Ryan Garcia. I think he stops Ryan Garcia. Well, Ryan Garcia is too busy jumping from camp to camp, so we can't figure out where he's at, anyways, right now. That so, him and Oscar De La Hoya like beef is hilarious on stupid. Twitter. Follow it on Twitter, guys. It's um, hilarious. So <clears throat> that being said, the future is bright. If it he, is. If he comes out of retirement, we can travel. What else is there to discuss? I know you wanted to mention a, a different fight, a different yeah. matchup. Let's discuss that real quick before we close out Speaking this Speaking of Oscar De La Hoya, he promotes Jaime Munguia, mm-hmm. who is a very top-level super middleweight middleweight, who is a good young guy. Got rocked and almost knocked out by Sergey Davrachenko over the weekend. Ended up coming back and bare- he knocked Davrachenko down with a body shot in the 12th and final round. Yeah. Ended up winning him the fight on two of the scorecards. If he didn't get that knockdown, he doesn't win that fight, okay? That was an amazing fight. It's good to see these young guys tested like that. But I used to think that Jaime Munguia had a big, big, bright future. But after watching his last couple fights, the guy takes too many big shots. And Dever Chinko has fought a lot of guys really tight and close. Triple G, a bunch of other guys as well. He's a good fighter. But Jaime Munguia was super tested, almost lost. Why I say it is because it was a crazy exciting fight. If you watch that fight, the back and forth of that fight was amazing. The mm. fan, it was on DAZN, which, by the way, I canceled my DAZN membership. <gasps> it's paid in full until September because I, I do it by the year. But they jumped like almost du- – I think more than double actually in their price. Stupid. And they have pay-per-views. The whole reason I subscribe to them – I'm going on a rant, but it happens. The only reason I subscribe to them is because their whole marketing thing was no pay-per-views. Pay us a monthly and subscription. Now and now they have the subscription plus pay-per-views. Might be time for B-Money as a new user, new email address to come in there and jump in there and get a little DAZN action for a year starting in September. Uh, we yeah. shall see. Uh, uh, weekend Trav. Uh, I don't want to digress too much further, but this episode's over. Uh, this was episode 126. We appreciate everyone watching or listening. If you're following us on YouTube or Rumble, 
please give us a thumb up. If you've yet to subscribe at any of those areas, any of those sites, please do so below. It helps us out, helps the metrics. We're not beyond asking because all the YouTube tutorials say, ask your, your audience for feedback we're and to subscribe below. We're politely And we're doing it politely you. now. And I think somebody even commented on Rumble, which was weird, on something. We're getting big time. We're big time. We are drinking this Jefferson's Ocean still. We did post a bourbon lounge episode, though it is a rye that we're drinking. Thank you to the 10 of you that have watched it. Yeah, we're not getting a lot of love <laughs> on you. our bourbon Thank you. videos. Thank you to whoever pushed that to double digits today. We appreciate the that The fact one. that we got a comment on Rumble about our bourbon. That's which is stupid. That's so funny. I think we're going to we're gonna rate the swill next uh, on that. But anyways. Uh, How do you rate the swill? How do you even rate that? Do we do a negative? We do it, we, no, we do it in reverse order, meaning the higher... The number, the worst it is. I, that's a 10. That's already too confusing. That's a 10. It's not a 10. It's not that bad. It's, I mean, it's bad. It's terrible. It's, and yeah. I hope to God we never find out what that actually is in that because that's going to be bad marketing for whatever bourbon we did try. Yeah. At least it wasn't proper 12. Maybe <laughs> we had a bad bottle of that because people, I know, seem, people I know. seem to like it. But when I had it, listen, I've had plenty of scotch. It just didn't taste good to me. Dude, it was bad. Okay. Um, we did drink like the whole bottle. To the fathers out there, this drops on a Wednesday. Father's Day weekend is the that weekend, and we'll post the next video the following week. So we'll have that little gap there um, uh, from Father's Day on. Plus, you are a dad. I'm a dad. We're going to be, you know, obviously having a good weekend. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Who's your daddy, B-Money? You know. <laughs> Jack is your dad. You yeah, actually can't say Yeah, my father. Uh, my <laughs> but yes, actual happy dad. Father's Day to everybody. Yeah, happy Father's Day to my father and to you as a father happy and to father's your dad and money. whatnot. You and your two children. Yes, and you and your one. Um, anything else I missed? Any final thoughts we can draft? I don't have too many final thoughts. Um, we are next week. We're on normal, but after that, mm-hmm. I'll be in London, England at Wimbledon. So we're going to have to do a, we'll figure it out. a Zoom call at a weird hour oh, because boy. I'm going to be five or six hours ahead. Zoom, zoom, zoom. That's not a big deal. We'll figure it out. We're going to continue to bring you all content, and uh, we just ask that you do give us a like, promote it, share it. We love it. We love doing this. We are the number one Beards, Bourbon, and Boxing podcast shot in Orlando, Florida, specifically Laureate Park, specifically in a boxing gym on the second floor of said boxing gym in the TH Boxing Podcast Room, shot on a Sunday or Monday today, though, being Tuesday, dropping on... Wednesday morning at 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the world. That is us, so we appreciate the support. As always, that over there is Weekend Trav. That there is B-Money, a.k.a. producer, a.k.a. the man that makes this podcast run. God bless. Peace.